very beginning of this because it was uh, um, a New Jersey congressman that first introduced the first three-state strategy bill, as it's called, Rob Andrews, uh, Democrat from New Jersey. And um, so that, of course, is, is now back both in the House and the Senate as well. Um, and I'm a big supporter of both of them. And I think that these two groups, you know, the, the two strategies actually can work very nicely with each other. I think that the three-state strategy is a great way to keep the ERA um, sort of before the public, um, particularly if we could get at least one other state <laughs> to, to ratify it, because I think there would be a huge, um, you know, sort of hue and cry about <laughs> that. Um, uh, both on both sides, mm -hmm. and I think that that would make for some great um, conversations and mm -hmm. discussion and debate about the need for the Equal Rights Amendment and all that. Um, at the same time, I recognize that if even if we were able to get three states, that um, Congress, of course, would have to make the determination. My guess is that the given the conservatism of today's uh, politics that it might not, you know, it might not make it through. Uh, it might go to the Supreme Court. Who knows what would happen there. But at least it would be, again, discussion about it. And that would then pave the way for the do-over bill to perhaps move mm -hmm. in Congress um, to go back out for ratification. And I'm guessing that given the, I mean, certainly there are plenty of conservative state um, legislatures out there today, but I think that there would be real, real battlegrounds now in a number of states uh, over this because I think women have become more and more aware of how their um, futures are tied to actually having some rights guaranteed in the Constitution, mm -hmm. which are not guaranteed by the highest law of the land. Mm -hmm. Only by the bills that you mentioned earlier, yeah. which can be reversed, can be whittled away at, can be negated in all kinds of subversive ways. Mm -hmm. And what you think you have, you know, may not be true mm -hmm. for your daughter or your granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where women today are looking at this and saying, you know, we may not need certain rights at this point, uh, but we would like to think that all future women would have the, you know, the, the rights that they are entitled to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or will come to need in the future. Right. I don't know what people are going to need at all. Yes. <laughs> you know, across the board, that's going to change. Yeah. I think, I think that sounds like a really robust approach, you know, to... I mean, I think... Both of them together, they can people and there. I know that there are some people that prefer to only work on the three-state strategy. Mm -hmm. I know there's some people that only want to work on the other uh, on the do-over strategy. But my feeling is that they can they complement each other, mm -hmm. and um, I would hope that somehow we could figure out a way to have those work together mm -hmm. um, in a in a positive way. Because mm -hmm. I I think that it's you know that really brings a um, a um, what do I want to say? It's they're synergistic, maybe. Yeah. Well, it would bring a tremendous amount of the political pressure yes. to the issue. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it's one of those things we were talking at lunch about new strategies that the system doesn't know how to adapt to. Right. right? <laughs> right. You know that that's that would maybe be one of those. Mm -hmm. You know that we're not just going to deal with this once and then put it on the shelf, but it's going to come right. in another form here in just a second and. Um, I think that that has some really interesting possibilities. Mm -hmm. You know, we see the same pattern of events happen with bills over and over yes. and over again, um, and the lobbying process is the same. And this goes the same way. And you can just sort of write the story before you even, mm -hmm. you know, have to look at it very hard. But that's an interesting new. Well, I think yeah. there. I feel as though in in you know in just speaking about the state of Virginia, and I know that. Uh, there have been a number of times that uh, the ERA um, has been brought up. It hasn't either, either no vote was taken at all or it got committee. Yeah, <laughs> committee or 
Um, it, you know, it, it hasn't made it out of one house or the other. So, but my feeling is that at some point there's going to be some sort of a game changer. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. We none of us know what it's going mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. But I would like to think that there's the possibility that you know the state of Virginia could actually join the 21st century. That would be really lovely, wouldn't it? <laughs> Everybody can join the 21st century. <laughs> yes, not, I should, I should, not, not just Virginia. No, there's a whole bunch of other people out there. <laughs> but since we were talking about Virginia. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and it is. It is and North Carolina, for that matter. North Carolina. Is, uh, yeah, they, they need more help than Virginia at this some point. Place. Yeah. Oh, oh my. I've got some trouble coming. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's one of those sort of central projects of Virginia now, of course, mm -hmm. to keep working on ratification of the state because we're always, yeah. you know, just that far away from being able well, to make it move. What I would like to think, and I, I don't know how this would happen, but um, you know, I can be such a idealist in many ways. Well, but, that's good. No, but but <laughs> I, I wish that there were a, um, say this, I wish there, that there was a group of organizations, highly visible organizations, that could come together and say, look, we're going to work. We understand that an Equal Rights Amendment impinges on all of our issues out here, and that this is a core issue, an issue that if, in fact, we had an Equal Rights Amendment, we might not be fighting this fight, this fight, this fight, this fight. And so we recognize that this is a core issue, and for the moment, not that we're going to do away with our issue, but we are all going to come together for the sake of the success of this thing, of this one thing. Yeah. And I actually believe that if a lot of the organizations, you know, in the National Council of Women's Organizations and maybe some that even aren't, I think if they all came together and said, look, we're for this, mm -hmm. um, and this is, we're going to spend some we're going to spend some time it's and money and, years and, and, uh, and really make this a big deal. Mm -hmm. I think we get it. Mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. But I feel as though there has to be some ones, and Bobby and I talked about this till we're blue in the face, between ourselves, <laughs> about how we really need to get the key players together in our and they need to come together and they need to sort of work out whatever their issues are and say, we're going to work for this for the good of the order and let's put aside some of our other issues, I mean, our, you know, our issues with each other so that we can, in fact, achieve this. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, um, you couldn't ask for anything more than that, yeah. even as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Well, it would be great because across yeah. across every kind of women's organization in the country, mm -hmm. you know, that amendment would make a tremendous difference to their work. I think it would. You know, yeah. I think it would. Um, and it would take a great deal. It would of be the underpinnings. Yeah, me. it would take a little wind out of the sails of you know yeah. the forces that are blowing against us. Mm -hmm. You know, be like, oh, yeah. we can't keep you on the defensive about this anymore. Right. But the, the energy it would free up. I mean, that's the thing. I keep yes, thinking. the energy it would free yes. up to do new stuff. Yes. Like, and I, and I, it would be, I don't even know what that would look like. It would be so awesome. It feels, <laughs> it does, it feels like this is a, it feels like some sort of unfinished business that has to be done before we can really get then to the next step. It feels to me that we've just allowed this to hang out there from 1982 to the present time mm -hmm. without coming up with a way that we can make this happen. Mm -hmm. And my feeling is if, if the key players got together and really worked to make this happen, it would happen. Mm -hmm. But I don't know whether that's going to, I don't know whether the key players are going to come together. And that's the part of this. Well, it might if I just take that little clip out of the video and circulate it around the internet for six months. <laughs>
<laughs> just put it on everybody's yeah. page. Oh, you mean uh, one of these endless loops? <laughs> yeah. An endless loop. Yeah. I, it yeah. just is so, it's so frustrating. I just, yeah. oh my. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, you know, we do need to wrap up, but sometimes there are real hurts and there are real disappointments mm -hmm. and distrusts <laughs> among um, various groups and cohorts and, and efforts across communities and across, um, you know, sort of issue interests yes. that lead to that difficulty. Yeah. And, um, but it has been done before. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We have seen people go, Absolutely. all right, okay. on this one thing, yeah. we're going to do this one thing. Right. Then we'll go back to, you know, not liking you very much. Right. But let's right. <laughs> you know, because, because, yeah, because ultimately all of our efforts would be increased by this one thing. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, and and I, I don't know whether the case has not been made strongly enough to all of the organizations out there. This is how this could help us. Um, I don't know whether that's been the case. I really don't know what it is. But I just keep thinking, this is not impossible. It's not impossible. And particularly with the level of visibility mm -hmm. that women and women's rights issues and so on have today, I think this is a golden opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it just needs, it just needs a handful of people who are willing to say, we're going to do it and we're going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So I end on that note. Hopefully. <laughs> From your mouth to Alice Paul's ears, Next week. Right? <laughs> May she stir amongst us. Yes, yeah, yes. Indeed. Indeed. Well, thank you, Barbara. Well, thank You've been you. very generous today with this, the gift of your memories and your, your thinking. And well, thanks. I enjoyed yeah, it. Really Great to talk good. with you. And I wish you much luck with your continuation of your project. Thanks. And if you decide you want to, you know, I can send you, email you Anne's contact information. Or, sure. You know, I have an email address for her and so forth. And you might want to talk to her since she's a little bit, um, um, you know, she's not part of the uh, Northern Virginia group.